make sure that we have everybody. So just once again, if everybody could please introduce yourself in the chat, um, your name, your school, and your title, so that we can have a sense of who is on the call. And with that, Mary Lou, would you like to take us away? <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Hope. It's so nice to see everybody here today. Um, this is the final day of the SUNY COIL Global Commons program that uh, you all have been working very hard on either as a student or perhaps as a faculty member or a contributor in other ways. Um, this was, as Hope said, a real SUNY-wide effort and we appreciate everyone for participating and for contributing to make this um, a success this summer. So we wanted to uh, remind you that if you'd like to access this presentation, uh, there is a bit.ly link there for you. You can follow the slides along either on the screen or on your own. Um, today's agenda is fairly loose, and so we welcome your comments and your uh, participation throughout. Uh, we wanted to start with some congratulations and remarks from the SUNY Provost and from the Associate Vice Chancellor of Global Affairs for SUNY and then have a quick overview of the work that was done on the program and everything that uh, all the wonderful projects that you did and then we'll have a few closing remarks and reflection so i'll start with uh, the remarks from our provost of the suny system todd larson hi everyone my name is todd larson and i'm the provost of the suny system I'm really, first of all, very sorry that I couldn't be with you this morning to celebrate your completion of the SUNY COIL Global Commons program in person, but I did want to pass along word of, of how proud I am of all of you and, and so glad to see the level of innovation, you know, by your professors, by our administrators here at SUNY, and most importantly, by you all as students as sort of uh, giving this tool its maiden voyage, so to speak, under very trying circumstances, uh, and really partnering in an intensive way with international NGOs uh, to work in depth uh, on, on issues of global sustainability and to understand those in the contexts in places all around the world. The program's been very intense, I know that. I understand that you've been working over six weeks uh, to do the work that you've been doing. We know that that required flexibility and dedication on your part and perseverance. Perseverance is particularly important when you're doing something for the first time, which I know what this was. But we were really intent that despite COVID, despite what we're all sort of pushing through these days, that we wanted to use the capability in COIL to really give you the opportunity to collaborate online, not only with the international partners uh, and community-based organizations, but, but also with your peers across SUNY. And I think we have a unique environment in which we can do that. And I'm so pleased the level of innovation and energy that came from everyone in making this happen. These problems of sustainability, as no doubt you deeply realize at this point, are really complex. They are messy in many instances. They require different points of view from students and researchers and practitioners with different types of training, with different viewpoints, uh, with different interests in mind. And I think our goal was to help try and recreate that realistic environment in which sustainability is going to be advanced and, and try to sort of deliver it within the context uh, of, of the Global Commons program. And I hope and I trust that we've been successful in doing that. We're really hoping too that on a personal level, you're able to take what you've learned during this program, maybe some of the skills you've developed, some of the insights that you've gained from partners internationally, and that they'll influence your future study within SUNY and maybe the career direction that you take following SUNY as well. I think uh, this notion of collaboration and interdisciplinarity, I think, everybody will realize are increasingly important. We see this in the COVID crisis right now. You know, the demands it's making of medical professionals, healthcare professionals, policy folks, increasingly education, 
childhood development, just think about how the sectors that look to support their fellow citizens in surviving a pandemic have had to sort of pull together and pool their resources and pool their expertise to innovate and to develop new solutions that we can all use to get through this together. And I think obviously the sustainability challenges that you all focused on in your work are other great examples of that. So again, I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't able to be with you today, but really congratulate you for your effort. And I thank you for being willing uh, to, to get on board this maiden voyage, so to speak, of the global commons concept. I'm really grateful to Mary Lou and Sally and others, the faculty members from 18 SUNY campuses uh, who really put their heart and soul into the development of this program. I trust that it's been a profitable and enjoyable uh, experience for all of you. I know not without pain and not without hard work, but I trust that it's been fulfilling as well and that the lessons learned in it will serve you well going forward. So thank you very much. And I, I again, oppress, express my apologies for not being able to be with you today, but really wish you a good celebration and a great day. Thanks very much. Great. So I wanted to also then introduce our Associate Vice Chancellor for Global Affairs, Sally Crimmins Valella. Oh. All right, is Sally here? She was here. Was here. Well, we all know how um, internet can connect yeah, to us. Um, you. Can you hear me? There you are. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I have a pretty unstable, I have an unstable connection at the moment. So I'm going to cross my fingers. You can hear me for the next yes. uh, couple of minutes. Great. All right. Thank you. I'm thrilled to, to be with you all today. And I just, I want to echo uh, Provost mm -hmm. Larson's remarks to congratulate all of you on a job exceptionally well done. Um, I think in the time that I was off, you introduced <laughs> me. And so everyone knows that I'm. Uh oh, we're losing you. We lost you. I can hear me. We can hear that you say we can hear you. Hello. Hi. Sorry. Apologies. I apologies for the bad uh, connection. Um, so in, in my job, in thinking about the work that we do here at SUNY, uh, we need to think about how, how does global learning play out at this vast system of 400,000 plus students? And we need to think about what does global learning mean? And who needs global learning? And how are we going to accomplish this? And I really feel like with the help of all of you who are gathered here today, we oh. I think we just lost Sally. All right. Well, I'm sorry that we lost Sally. Hopefully she'll be able to come in and say a few more words, but I know uh, I can express her sentiment that she's so appreciative of all of the hard work that went into this, particularly of the spirit of collaboration that happened across the SUNY system among students, among professors, and among the campuses that supported the development of these programs. It's been uh, a really gratifying experience to work with everybody and to also see that we can create something interesting and effective that contributes to the sustainability of the world together. So I hope Sally will be able to uh, contribute additional remarks, but uh, we want to thank you very much for all of your work on behalf of the Office of Global Affairs for SUNY. I'll just jump in and say, since Sally can't, uh, and, I'll, and I'll do it in fewer words. This is one of the coolest things I've ever worked on. And it was <laughs> thrilling to see how it all came together 
uh, in, in the and then to see in the last week the results and the comments from the students and the international partners it's just been amazing leave it at that and john justino i'm so glad we pulled you in it's good to see you good to see you too and it was a great experience wonderful that was jim pascal he's the uh director of international programs for the office of global affairs all right so shall we move on and, and... Oh. Mary Lou? yes you're back I, I apologize. The internet's not behaving. I, I apologize. The internet's not behaving. I, 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 um, I just want to say that thanks to all of you, we feel like we've learned so very much about why global learning is needed and how important it is and how much we can accomplish even when none of us are able to travel. And I want to thank all of you for coming on this exploratory journey with us. Uh -oh. I think we lost her again. All I right. think we need to move on. We'll move on to uh, to hearing about the different um, projects that you've worked on and the different sustainable development goals. So I know we have a group representing um, the No Poverty Sustainable Development Goal. We do. And I will, uh, Raphael, if you're there. Um, if you could please give a brief overview. Not here. Hey everybody. I'm sorry, I'm not in touch. I'm not in touch. There you are. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know. Um, so, hi, how's everyone? Um, we are the No Property Group. Um, Coming. Sorry for my poor internet connection, but it's a little cloudy where I am. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. So for the project we put together, we've got two. We've got two different. Um, we've got two different end products. The first is a poster for a permaculture course. Now our NGO partner was Kibbutz Lotan, and they put together an online course which shares information on sustainable development and eco-friendly building, as well as low resource agriculture. Now, Kibbutz Lotan is situated in the middle of the Negev desert, and they are able to not only cultivate crops, but also they've found ways to work around the low resource constraints that come with living in a desert. And if you take those methods and you apply them to places that have very little infrastructure and for example, we'll click a, a country such as Haiti, which is where I'm from, that is my home. And if you apply those same policies or those same methods, you're able to feed more people by getting more crops and more, how do I put this, more, you get more of an output, you get more yield, and thus you're able to do more with less. And we found that this was a very, uh, a very efficient tool in the fight against poverty. So we then so then i reached out to certain people i knew and i found people in haiti who are willing to who are willing and ready to share the word of this course to spread the just basically spread the knowledge and we also have created a wordpress a, a page a web page a website so the goal of the website is to constantly be updated with information about the course. For example, um, later on when it's been applied and we have picture proof of other locations implementing these, these methods, we, the website can have, for example, before and after pictures of those locations and the stories of the people that did apply the project. And it's got it's just a kind of like an organism 
for this web page that can continue to be updated and grow as the needs Ash, can. I hate to interrupt you, but um, that's a warning. You have a couple more minutes and then um, we got to move on to the next. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Two more minutes. No problem at all. Okay, so great. The end result on our end was this poster, which shows uh, which shows pieces of the syllabus for the um, program itself, a mission statement, and contact information, and pictures. And the other one is a WordPress site, which I would share, but I'm not able to. I don't think I'm able to screen share here. But the link will is posted in the final project upload. It's one of the buttons under the site and. We also have a storytelling portion. And as far as my session, that is all I can say. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Um, Ken, would you like to say anything else? Uh, I would just uh, acknowledge the students' uh, and good work in developing this partnership. One of our primary aims was to add value for our NGO and through Raphael's uh, relationships in Haiti and our students' uh, willingness to really get on board. We were able to connect this hands-on online course to people who otherwise would have never received it. So uh, the students did an excellent job of taking this uh, and not making it hypothetical, but getting it on the ground uh, to communities that will greatly benefit from it. So the community, the nonprofit, and the students, all synced up and, and it resulted in good work that uh, I'm very proud of, I'm very proud of the students. Great, thank you so much. Hats off, everybody can give a round of applause to um, SDG one. And we're moving on to SDG three. So, um, well, uh, this is John Justino. I was the uh, facilitator for the course. I see that there is a student here um, from my course, uh, and that's Victoria. Victoria did work on this project. I'm going to put her on the spot uh, to see if she wants to talk very briefly uh, about her team's project, and I can talk about the other two. Victoria, are, are you able to just briefly introduce the project you worked on? Yeah, sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Victoria, and um, as Professor Justino said, I worked on um, team one, which was to relate um, our NGO's mission, which was primary healthcare and health management in Nigeria to the goal, the universal goal of SDG3, which was good health and well-being. So for our project, we decided to do a video um, and the video ended up being 12 minutes long, which was a little long for uh, something to like, like uh, to capture people's um, attention, but we felt like it was very important to um, have the voices of the elderly and all the members of PRIMAC, uh, which is short for our NGO's um, full name, um, to, to voice like their hope and what they see in the vision for their, um, <clears throat> their goal, which is elderly friendly communities. And I worked with two other group members, Laura and Cooper, and we did a Zoom interview um, for, I don't know, I think like five or six hours. And then we uh, transcribed our interviews and then pulled quotes out that um, helped create this full narrative um, that we'll be showcasing in the video. Yeah, and so the process was very, very eye-opening really because I was not able to, I probably would have never been exposed to the happenings of um, the elderly community outside of my own community. And I was never brought attention, um, I was never, I never paid attention to health inequity in terms of the elderly community that much. So I think this was a very, very rewarding experience, to say the least. Thank, Thank you so, so Thank what, you so Victoria, much. Yeah. which school are you from? Um, I'm from Binghamton University. Great. Thank you. Um, and I'm just going to quickly comment that we, the, we had three teams in this class. So the second team worked with the NGO partner Primac to create a web-based magazine, which also had a, a goal of positioning the, the NGO's mission uh, to be a helpful aspect to the response to COVID-19. So 
they focused on that. They did an amazing job. I think this is a 20 page magazine uh, with lots of information. Um, and the next group, team three, similarly, this was a team that was made up of a group of nursing students and they applied what they had learned about working in healthcare sectors here during COVID-19 to create some information graphics and uh, in, um, flyers to educate the NGO's uh, population and community members on issues related to COVID-19 and preventing the spread of COVID-19. We do have actually our NGO a representative from Primac on this call, Gideon. Um, Idiene, I would ask him maybe to make a quick comment before we move to the next, if that's okay. Gideon, are you there? You're on mute. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, uh, first of all, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah, so uh, I want to appreciate uh, the organizers of this project. It has been a very rewarding project for Primark, Primary Health Care and Health Management Center here in Nigeria. Uh, we uh, initially had a meeting where we have representative of uh, the various groups having Zoom meetings with me as a focal person from Primark. And after that, we uh, decided to work on three major projects. And I want to say that uh, we have tried test running the product that was produced by Victoria and her group. And then uh, we, though we are here to test the infographic, but uh, we have received a lot of feedback, a positive feedback on the web magazine and uh, the video. So, and we are looking forward to uh, further uh, partnering with the various persons we have engaged on this project. Like really, it has been an, uh, a rewarding experience has been a life fulfilling experience. Like the elderly community, we believe that the narrative is going to change with uh, these uh, information materials, uh, and then it will help us in carrying out our advocacy. It will also be very, very instrumental in uh, raising funds uh, because that has been a major challenge you know, in leveraging, in you know, upscaling what we have been doing over the years. And so I want to appreciate Victoria. I want to appreciate uh, Professor John Justino. I want to appreciate uh, Professor Mara Huber. And uh, every member of the, uh, the team, the student, uh, Daniela, all of them, uh, we, we appreciate what they have done. And we believe that this will be very, very instrumental in uh, changing the narrative around elderly care here in Nigeria. So thank you so much. Thank you, Gideon, that's wonderful. And thank you also to Mara Huber, who really supported the, the, me during this whole course and helped make this connection with Primac. So thank you, that's it for our, uh, groups. It was a great experience. Okay, Barb and your team, take it away. Great. Thanks so much. I know there's a couple of students present. Um, and so um, I'm going to ask them to say a few words. Hope, um, can I move the PowerPoint forward or are you controlling that or how is that working? Um, it's Mary Lou, and if you could just ask when you gotcha. would like to Okay, move so if to you can next... go to the next slide. So yes, we are SDG5, um, Sustainable Development Goal on Gender Equality, and the um, students in my class, you can see their names here in their institutions. The goal of the course was to introduce students to the history and development of the SDG5, gender equality and explore themes and issues of girls education and LBGTQIA plus identities and freedoms. Those are the two lenses that students have a choice of um, exploring. Many of the students um, landed in the, um, in the sexual identities and freedoms lens, although we had one student that was in the girls education lens. Um, and we partnered with the NGO Hope Revival Children's Organization in Tanzania and the student's project outcome is this video. And I know it runs about four and a half minutes. Do we have enough time to show it, Hope? Ooh, just the beginning. Okay, well, let's just like give like a little taste of the video. And then the students that are here might um, say a few words. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is equality. Hope Revival Children's Organization can provide you with knowledge to change the world.
Women's empowerment is a way of leveling the playing field between men and women. Women are just as important as men, and their voices deserve to be heard. The goal of Hope Revival Children's Organization is to provide you with the tools to take on the world. So far, Hope Revival Children's Organization has worked to educate girls and women about menstrual health, providing children with bikes to get to school, implementing and maintaining clean water and sanitation, the reusable pad project, yeah, so it's a good stopping point. Um, one of the goals of the project was to uh, raise awareness about the re reusable sanitary pad project. That was a goal um, and objective from Stephen Mara, the director of the HRCO. So um, I know that Gabby is here and Anton and maybe Heather, if you want to just say a few words, that would be lovely. Sure. Hey, uh, um, my name is Gabrielle. Um, so over the past six weeks, we were working closely with the Hope Revival Children's Organization to make a video for them that promotes the Repad project. Um, in th through working out this video, we well, I learned the all the challenges that come with leadership and how much empathy I have for people like Stephen Marla, who. Um, work really hard to, uh, um, I guess, advocate for the women of this generation and the next and just better their lives, give them more excellent opportunities. And um, with that, uh, okay, so what he does is he teaches girls and women how to make reusable sanitary pads. Um, and this is because of the questionable hygienic conditions in his country. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. So we made a video that helps them, um, that is a resource to them that they can use as a promotional piece. And it's, the women who participate in this project are going to have better, like, opportunities moving forward in education, in, um, their dreams are going to become bigger, they're going to widen, and uh, they're more likely to flourish as individuals moving forward. Great. Thank you so much, Gabby, because we, I just got a note from um, Hope that we have two more minutes. Um, and so um, I just want to check in and see if Heather or Anton want to say a few words. Um, I guess I could. Um, with, like, okay, in Tanzania from it seems that the, with the questionable um, hygiene and everything like that, it's also a lack of education on women's education on like menstrual health and things like that, which um, is obviously causing problems due to the fact that like there are two options for like uh, people that are girls that have their periods during schools, which is um, some of the examples that we had were buying expensive um, or buying disposable pads, which can raise up in prices because you keep having to buy disposable ones from someone without a large, without a um, like extensive um, steady income that causes problems because every few months you have to buy a new thing or right. even money. And then, yeah. um, or the alternative using cloth or um, things like that, which also cause major problems. So Stephen um, used a, uh, came up with an idea of creating a reusable replacement. So instead of having to shill out money every month for a box of disposable, you can reuse this one for a long time. Great, and thank you so much, Anton. I just yeah. <laughs> note that we're out of time. Um, yeah, no yeah, so thanks so much for the words. I want to say the most important part of the project was getting across the notion of women's empowerment. As a faculty member teaching this, it was inventive and innovative. We asked the students to step in and navigate a very sophisticated objective in terms of teaching and learning. And um, I'm grateful to be part of the program. All righty. Thank you, Barb, and thank you, students. So moving on to Linda, Geronda, and your students. And instead of describing the project, could your students give a little bit about how the project, what the project meant to them? 
I mean, sure. I'll, yeah, that would be great. That's great. Thanks, Thanks, Hope. Hi, everybody. I'm Linda Gerona. I'm an adjunct from SUNY Purchase, and I had the privilege to teach uh, the SDG Lens 10 through the, law, through the lens of law and social justice. Uh, on the call is Kyla Meltzer, who is a student um, who will give you an overview, and also with us is Sydney Eisenberg, uh, the project manager from Inkululeko. So I would like the two of them to speak. Kyla? Kyla, you're muted if you're speaking. I'm so sorry. I'm Kyla Meltzer from SUNY New Pulse. I was the video editor for this team. We were tasked by Inkululeko to create a video that would help with their marketing. And Inkululeko works um, to provide educational opportunity to township youth in South Africa. South Africa is incredibly unequal, the most unequal place on the earth. And so it was um, a great privilege to be able to work on something that could allay those effects, um, even in a post-apartheid society. On the next few slides, we have some of the videos that we've worked on. The, um, the uh, first video on the other slides, uh, there's the apartheid video, which focuses on the context in which Inkuleko exists. You can't separate Inkuleko and the significance of its work um, in reducing inequalities without actually focusing on the fact that apartheid, and it's, uh, although it's legally over, its effects are still ongoing. Um, and the next, video on the next slide, which I would like to share perhaps 30 seconds to a minute of. Um, this one focuses on the psychosocial aspects of Inkuleko's work and how they try to create a holistic experience for their students to be well mentally and spiritually. With the township, with, which is the eastern side of um, Grahamstown, you find that people are very disadvantaged because they don't have money, they have no motivation to make money because we have this mentality that um, a certain lifestyle is suited for certain people but for the learners in the township it's just you have to work hard there is no support whatsoever and they are not used to having to talk about feelings they don't know how it relates to you succeeding in life truth be told it is very demotivating because you want to do well at school but you don't have the resources you don't have the textbook you don't have teachers and there is no one out there to say hey how can I help you? How may I assist you? Like, what do you need? There's no one to do that. Living in a society where you've historically faced oppression, there's just that whole layer of historical trauma that is associated with that and associated with apartheid. And so those psychosocial resources that include LACO provides are also really important for growth. Um, perfect. So that was Sydney, and we actually have her here on the call. She's an intern at include LACO, and I'll turn it over to her. Hi, um, I'm Sydney, and like Kyla said, I am an intern with Inkubuleko, and I had the pleasure of working with um, these students on this project. Um, they did such a great job interviewing and working across time zones and across technical difficulties and difficulties securing data, which um, is a huge problem for our staff and learners. So these students did such a great job overcoming these barriers and producing these two amazing videos that showcase um, the work that we do at Inkululeko and how that work relates back to the sustainable development goal of reducing inequality. And we've already shared um, that video that you just watched a little bit of far and wide, like through our WhatsApp updates. It's gonna be on our email newsletter and it was just shared on our Facebook. So we are very excited and appreciative for these students for all of the work that they've put in. And Jason, the founder of Inkululeko can't be here today, but he just wants to thank all of you for all of this work. And yeah, thank you for me as well. This was a really great thing to be a part of. And um, yeah, I'm really excited and hope that there's a partnership with um, Inkululeko and the this program in the future. And also to note the um, head of Inkululeko is a SUNY graduate. Yep, he is. <laughs> right, and Kyla is, will be their next intern at Inkululeko. So we are thrilled about that. And there'll be an opportunity to take the work and the footage uh, that was uh, collected here and continue to work with it for Inkululeko's sake. So thank you. Yeah. It's been my privilege to be a part of this incredibly unique and amazing program. Uh, it's one of the best projects or classes that I've ever been a part of in all of my years in teaching with SUNY. So thank you. Yeah, and we're so excited to have you, Kyla. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to disabilities and advocacy. Cindy, take us away. 
Okay, thank you. So um, I was the facilitator. I was also a content um, provider for the disability lens for SDG 10. Um, we created two projects for the National Resource Center for Children with Disabilities in Ghana. The first one I'll introduce um, because the students who produced it can't be here. It's uh, Kanonim. It's a actually it's a three act play. Um, and as an anthropologist, I um, I was really pleased that they incorporated play as a mechanism in um, getting the story out for the National Resource Center. So the uh, the play talks about um, and tries to break the stereotypes around two different types of disabilities. The first is um, someone who is vision impaired, who is going to become a um, psychologist who's earning her PhD and the adversity that she faces and the second one is um, a gentleman who is autistic who is a um, computer programmer for Vodafone and Vodafone is one of the largest cell phone companies um, in Ghana so during the play you see the struggles that um, both folks go through the stereotypes some of um, the um, superstitions around disabilities uh, the students did a fabulous job um, talking with Prince and Paul who are both here in understanding the culture some of it um, you know difficult from an American perspective to um, to understand but they were very culturally sensitive in weaving it into the play um, Prince or Paul do you want to say anything about the play the students enact reenacted it yesterday and we all cried so. <laughs> um, yes Paul it's for there I don't, know. I don't know if you can hear us, Prince. You might want to go ahead because we don't have a lot of time. Right. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. So as Cindy said, I mean, the the work I call a masterpiece was so wonderful. And uh, we appreciate the commitment of Parmark and all the other individuals also involved, Mali and everyone. Um, it's so wonderful because it, it helps us to understand the universality of the challenge that confronts the persons with disability and how with the commitment of everybody using technology and the commitment of society will be able to bring lasting change in our society. So uh, what we are looking at doing is that this play- Okay, Prince, to... Prince. Oh, I'm sorry, Prince, we gotta cut you off because we gotta move to the next one. So the other project, very quickly, <laughs> um, it moved to the next slide. Okay, um, Pam, real quick, do you want to say anything real quick about your video? <laughs> and Pam. It's better when the mic's on. Okay. Um, this video is building on the momentum that Paul and Prince has already started in Ghana for leveling the playing field for children with disabilities and creating the inclusive classroom. So our video is focused on inclusion, uh, the perception of disabilities, and how technology can change a disability to an advantage. And we were a neurodiverse team, which added another layer of wonderful. As Marley is on the spectrum, which she's not here now, she gives her personal testament of what it is to be someone who lives with disabilities and she shows how it is a strength and it's something that she can draw from others. Okay, so I, I assume you're not gonna have time to show a snippet of the video, so it's six minutes. In the middle of the 19th century, one in every 25 people in Chilmark was deaf due to a hereditary gene. And while one in 25 people were deaf, 25 in 25 knew how to sign. To the people of Chilmark, the remarkable high concentration of deafness wasn't something that needed to be understood 
because it wasn't remarkable. Largely cut off from the rest of the world, they didn't know the difference between hearing or deaf. They did not have a disabled population. They spoke two languages and they were equal citizens. Okay, we gotta stop. <laughs> but that's a great teaser. Yeah, it's right at the good point. Then we bring in Marley um, and she gives her testimony of how communication opened the world for her. Okay, and there's Paul. Oh, but I guess we got to yes. move on. Yeah, Paul, do you want to say a couple of remarks right at the end after we've got a couple more projects and then we have a time for reflection and it would be great to hear from you. And you could also put something in the chat as well. Thank you. Right. Welcome. Okay. All right. So with that, Sustainable Cities. So can we move to the next slide? Laura Penman, you're up. Yes, so we worked with an organization in Jordan uh, called the Sustainable Cultural Heritage for the Engagement of Local Communities Project, abbreviated as SHEP. Uh, so Jordan has a large amount of its GDP dependent upon tourism, though most of the that money goes towards uh, large multinational tourist companies taking folks to Petra as one of the wonders of the world. And Shep recognized that there were many, many other archeological heritage sites, as well as other forms of cultural heritage that could be conserved in this nation, and then also build economic opportunity for some of the very marginalized communities that happen to reside near these heritage sites. So we had 12 students that were divided into three groups and each of those groups focused on a different heritage site with its own cultural heritage offerings. Shep saw this as an opportunity to promote these tourism sites for the Western audience. So a part of it is telling the story of your tourism can actually benefit local communities and help conserve their heritage, as well as a bit of a sales pitch, come here when COVID is over. Uh, so we have our first organization and Barbara Caldwell is here ready to speak about it a little bit. Good afternoon, everybody. I wanna thank you for the opportunity to participate in this all together. I am a, I, I'm from SUNY New Paltz. I'm administrator there. I'm also in the master's program and this uh, project, the whole uh, class opportunity meant for me a chance to hone my skills in storytelling. And so, uh, and then also to see how could take those skills and make a difference in um, sustaining um, cultures, um, uh, especially actually in our own area in the Mid Hudson Valley. Um, we connected with the um, team from Akabawi, which is uh, the um, MSE that is opening up Akaba to uh, visitors who are interested in a more sustainable, authentic uh, con uh, connection to their visits. Um, and they were very helpful. They confirmed something that I had begun to believe, uh, which was that um, one of the givens, one of the things that you can count on in Jordan is hospitality. And so tourism is a natural there. Um, we had uh, great conversations, learned an awful lot. The team that I was with did a beautiful job of digging into what was there, what was available, what they could, you know, could be shared, how that was relevant to this incredibly That's long time. history um, yeah. location. And if we could so just click through the other two very quickly. There was also a group in 
who focused on the mountainous area of Sarah, where they are setting up a foundation for cultural heritage and more about education to local school children to help them value their own heritage, as well as opening up for international tourists. And then uh, another organization was in the Death Valley, um, not Death Valley, I'm sorry, <laughs> different valley, Dead Sea Valley. Uh, and they created a very interactive and engaging website with some lovely graphics to promote, again, those sustainable tourism and cultural heritage. I'm very proud of the work that all the students did. They had interviews with three different um, I guess project leaders in these three different sites so it was a lot to coordinate and prepare for. Great thank you so much Laura and thank you to your students and with that Kurt it's time for you to take it away. Hi great thank you all. Um, so my name is Kurt Gervich and I am an associate professor at SUNY Plattsburgh in the Center for Earth and Environmental Science. I am an environmental planner and was facilitating CG13 climate action lens um, or climate action course. And there were two lenses in the course. One was environmental planning, which is a lens that I developed. And the second was about food systems, which was developed by Ryan Andrews, who's at SUNY Purchase. And the NGO that we worked with was Friends of Brackenhurst Forest, um, which is located in Kenya. Um, and we worked with Herbert Ngabo um, and uh, John o. Jenkins and their graphic designer and artist named Nicola. You can flip to the next slide. We had an absolutely fantastic time working together. Uh, all of our Zoom chats and interactions were at five and six in the morning. Um, but each time uh, that early, we had more and more pointing and our conversations and relationships just got better and better. It was so much fun. So there were three projects that came out of this, uh, um, this partnership. The first was a graphic novel. This was created by Annie Manisilk, who's a student at Uni Purchase. And this was unlike any other graphic novel that I've ever seen. You see some of the images here on the right. These are hand painted images that Annie um, that Annie painted based on photos that Friends of Brackenhurst Forest had provided us. And the goal of this graphic novel was to give an overarching story, um, the kind of history and some context to the reason that the work this NGO is doing is so great. And it'll be used for crowdsource fundraising in the next uh, few weeks. And you can flip to the next slide. I couldn't help but include some other images from Annie's graphic novel because the, the hand painting was just so beautiful. Um, so I just wanted to include some of those. Um, this, the second project is a uh, podcast um, that introduces the organization to its stakeholders and conveys the importance of the forest and the things that you can do there for community health and well being. Um, and emotional health. And there were three students that worked on this project. Natalie Amadon, I think, is on the call. Um, Natalie, are you there? And you want to describe this a little bit? Yeah, I'm here. Great. Go ahead, Natalie. Yeah, so this is the um, project that I helped develop. Um, this is a podcast just kind of focusing on, like Kurt said, the emotional well being. Um, and all the conversations that we had with the Friends of Brackenhurst Forest, the thing that really stuck with me is like just how much better they felt going in the forest and how important it is to like, as humans, we've gotten so far away from nature and that it's super important to get back into it. And with this kind of like feeling that we're a part of nature again, that can then help with climate action aspects because we can't see ourselves as outside of nature anymore. So that's kind of the emotion that I wanted to portray with the creation of this podcast. Cool. Thank you so much, Natalie. And the third product that came from this partnership is a video 
that highlights the ecological services and values provided by the forest that Friends of Brackenhurst Forest is trying to restore. Um, a cool thing that has happened is that Friends of Brackenhurst Forest is a new organization. They're just getting off the ground in the middle of COVID, so they've had a, a bit of a slow start, but they have assured us that all of these products will be used in just the next few weeks to help them start um, building their membership and raising some initial funds through some crowdsourcing and social media sites. Um, and they'll keep us updated on how they're used. And I know the students are gonna keep on working with Friends of Brackenhurst, and I already have another project that I will work with them on as well in the future. So uh, this relationship continues to grow, I think is really exciting. So thank you so much for the opportunity to, to teach in the program. Um, and we can move on. Okay, great. Thank you, Kurt, and thank you to all the facilitators and the students. So, um, Chilton, do you want to just explain a little bit about, we have this place here for everybody to go and see what we've done. Chilton, go thank for it. Thank you very much. Hello all, my name is Chilton Reynolds. Um, I work at SUNY Oneonta. Um, Hope just put a link into the chat for the website we've created. As you can see, there's a lot of amazing products here that have been created and projects and stories around them. And we wanted to have one place we could have everyone be able to go to to be able to see all of these. Um, so uh, we created this site, um, which you can see in the link. Um, in the top right hand corner, there's a, a thing for projects. We've listed all the projects by the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal that they are around. So you'd be able to go back in and see any and all of these projects. Um, in addition, we hope to be able to start to collect some um, additional messages from some of our NGO partners, um, from some of our facilitators, and be able to share all those in one place, as well as some of the actual reflections from students if they'd be willing to share those. Um, so we have one place where we can share a lot of the different stories that have come out of this, all, all of these amazing products. Um, so this is the, the space. Um, again, I uh, hope to put the, the link in. We actually had a whole bunch of uh, projects that were posted over the last 24 hours and some more coming in still. Uh, so this is not complete at this point from this, this time, uh, from this set of projects, but it will be growing over the next week probably as more things come in. Um, I do wanna give a quick shout out to Ed Beck. Uh, he's an instructional designer here at SUNY Oneonta who did a lot of the backend work on this and just wanna, uh, um, say thanks to him for all, all the work that he did to get us up and running with this. Um, and you can now go here and check it out. It's, it is the place where almost everything we've seen is already in here. Um, and you can uh, check it out and see all of these great projects and be able to get back to them. Great, thank you so much. Um, so yes, please, students, facilitators, folks on the call, SIOs, um, global folks, SDG folks, this is a place for you to see what has been done. And with that, um, I, I wanted to open up the floor and we can stop sharing. Um, we want to thank everyone, um, but this is an opportunity now for uh, students, if you'd like to share a reflection or people who have um, participated in this, um, this is really an opportunity in these last few minutes to just um, say how it was for you. And actually, why don't we start with Paul from the SDG Inequality that worked with Cindy, who I cut off earlier, um, if he would like to say something. There you are. Would you like to say something? Yeah. OK, so the Paul here. Wonderful. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, great, great. So, um, so, sorry for earlier on when I was trying to uh, unmute my face, I think I left. So, yeah, our project was, um, I mean, looking at all the project, I think it has been very great. But um, ours, um, in terms of reducing inequality in Ghana, um, we were so excited because we see a lot of stigmatization and discrimination. And if you look at the play that um, Cindy supervised the students to do, it really highlights the capabilities and abilities of uh, persons with disabilities. And 
myself as a person with disability, I learned a lot from it. And also um, having a person with disability in the video, also sharing her personal stories and how technologies can reduce um, inequality was really an eye opening. And uh, we, we, I think that this is a very good project and a program that ought to be continued. So thanks to everyone um, um, in our team and all the other projects, amazing, amazing projects that everybody um, has done. We hope that this will continue to impact a um, lot of lives in different, different areas of uh, the continent. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Paul. That is wonderful. Um, any students who would like to say a few words? I, I see also another NGO person who is on the call. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, Anton. Anton, yeah. please. I, I mentioned this in the chat. I just thought it was kind of funny um, with the fact that I'm an 18 year old boy in America. And I have to communicate health, menstrual health tips to girls in Tanzania. I am not the right person to do this job at all. It was funny. But um, so we like, we changed it from being, because um, part of it was um, initially we were being, um, there was communication with like, what we were trying to do exactly, like um, where we're trying to get uh health tips and stuff like that but then it came across as we'll just we'll do kind of like a pro promotional thing because we're not health professionals and i don't think you should cover that without an, an expert on the feet on in our group it something like that to just give us exactly what you're supposed to do so that was an issue but it's still like it, i'm i'm happy with how with where we ended up and our product and things like that so it, it ended well it was just kind of funny that that's just a weird Thing right. Yeah, yeah it ended very well. Hi, I'm Gabby. We were in the same group. Um, yeah, there were several challenges that we had to overcome, especially from the beginning of, of um, starting the project when we really just didn't know how to approach it. Um, if we were comfortable with making the viewer feel comfortable, if that makes sense. Because right. yeah. there are several factors, cultural factors that we weren't familiar with. Okay. So familiarizing ourselves with the culture from such a distance, that was the challenge. But Great. as soon as we well, overcame yeah, that, well, yeah. everything well, yeah. just kind of flowed. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So I just want to also give a chance to um, Adriana wanted to speak and um, then there was an NGO person. Yes, yeah, Stephen. Stephen is there as well uh, with the panel. Okay. So he joined okay. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Great. Hello. Hi, Hello. everyone. Hello. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Great. Actually, I'm very happy with the presentations that I'm sure of this community, especially in Africa. I could not expect that this project, when we were, I was thinking about the project, I could not imagine what would not really happen, but eventually I have come to realize this is the problem that you need to continue the same, pro, uh, the same program as we keep on going, and it will really change the community as far as cultural, uh, different events, and, uh, and it will change even the mentality from different uh, communities. Another thing is that these projects we need to they have assisted to, to identify to explore a lot of stages uh, from different communities we were not anticipating that it could happen otherwise thank you guys thank you very much i really appreciate on what you have done this time let we continue having some partners from different areas thank you very much guys and thank, thank you. you appreciate the opportunity to have worked with you great all right. Well, thank you all so much. Mary Lou, would you like to say a few words as we head out? And it looks like Sally has a better connection now, too, if you wanted to. 
say anything. Hey, yes, thank you. So I just wanted to say on behalf of the steering committee, what a privilege it's been first to collaborate with amazing colleagues from across the SUNY system, second to put together a program with NGO partners who've been so willing to give so much to the students uh, to make it happen and to allow us to help you amplify your work so that other people in the world can see the wonderful things you're doing. And then finally, of course, to the students for your enthusiasm, for your dedication, uh, as Todd said earlier, for your perseverance. Um, we are, I think, universally impressed with the quality of the work that you've done, with the amount of work that you got accomplished in such a short period of time, and with the way that you were able to do this with respect uh, and with clear uh, support for the work that your partners have done. So thank you all so much for everything that you've done for this program. We're so pleased um, that you have successfully come through it and that you've been able to offer so much. Um, if I may add um, just a few more words, um, as a student, uh, as a rising sophomore at Binghamton, um, I feel like this is a very humbling experience as well because you realize the amount of growth um, in terms of learning about other countries, about other world issues that you're previously unaware of, and also in terms of storytelling, narrating, in any of the mediums that we worked in. So I feel like um, this is a very hopeful um, prospect for students like myself who I've suddenly realized that there's another world out there that um, we can, that there are unlimited possibilities. And so I'm really thankful for my facilitators, Gideon, Professor Justina, and Professor Huber for really inspiring, I think, all of, our, all of their students and all of us to uh, con continue to grow and learn. So thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Victoria. Yeah. Round of applause and the um, catch up thing that is supposed to be another way to celebrate. Um, so with that, I think we're going to say goodbye. Thank you so much. Unless any other student want to say another little something. I want to. Oh, Adriana, go for it. No poverty program. And uh -huh, you're you're very mute. Can you put your sound up a little? Uh-huh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I agree with Victoria in the fact that this was extremely humbling and an eye opener to a lot of problems that we didn't necessarily know existed. Um, I think that the spread of awareness on everything that we've done is really important. And I'm excited moving forward. Hopefully you guys will continue with this program to give the opportunity to other students to be able to put their creativity into the world and give back to the NGOs that have done so much already. So I'm very appreciative. Thank you so much. Um, and we are really appreciative to those NGOs and this connection. And I just think that we all need to give a round of applause to Mary Lou Forward because without her vision of all of this, nothing could have happened. And so it took a village to make it happen, but a mastermind behind it who made it all come together. So huge round and of I applause. I hope I... I absolutely want to join that round of applause. Thank Mary Lou Forward for her amazing vision and leadership on this. I don't know who could have pulled so much complexity together into such a beautiful outcome. So thank you so very much, Mary Lou, for this work. We're so proud of what all of you have accomplished this summer. And I also want to give a giant shout out to, of course, Hope Wendell, who's been our uh, guide here today. We're really thankful to all your work on this as well, Hope. And there's someone who's not here, but whose uh, touch was on every single aspect of this program, and that's Jan McCauley, Coil's Assistant Director. So I do want to really recognize the work of Jan McCauley. So thank you, Team Coil. Thank you, all of my SUNY colleagues. Thank you to our NGO partners who put your faith in our uh, SUNY students and our SUNY faculty. And thank you to the faculty that made this happen. You guys are amazing and this work is moving. So, thank you all. Yay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you.
Yes, thank you for the big heavy lift that all of you did. Yay. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna stop recording and we will say farewell. <laughs>